content warning. This essay discusses racism and racist violence, religion and religious trauma, mental health and attitudes towards neurodivergent people, and recreational substance use. Please proceed at your discretion. Additionally, while we wrote this with contributions from Black fans, we want to recognize that I am not Black and cannot speak with authority on this topic. We have linked further reading in the description of this video with the permission of the writers. Please check out the artist's link there, too. It's important to us that we acknowledge that white fans aren't the originators of these ideas. Black fans, myself included, have been saying these things for years. It's our hope that this video will be informative for those who were previously uninformed and respectful to those who were. This video was written by and with contributions from Bucky Grant, Momo, Riff, Daft Class, and Janaya Riley. Thank you also to our Masters in Hushin Analysis sponsors Alt Universe Wash and Danny Spoonlord. And now, our feature presentation. Hey, welcome back! Please give a warm welcome to Daft Class, who joins us from his stellar webcomic, Alpha Halcyon Epsilon. Check that out at the link below. Fuck you, Bucky! And a very merry fuck you, too! This time on our character identification series, we're piling into the clown car! And despite what I just said, this one is going to be more serious. One of the most iconic and infamous characters in Homestuck, Gamsi Makara is a complex and rich character to analyze. A lot of the characteristics that define a Gamsi are overlapping. Their entire character is far less straightforward than a similarly controversial character like Vriska, not in the least because they are an amalgamation of Homestuck's anxieties and idiosyncrasies. Discussing what makes a Gamsi involves looking at the racism, homophobia, and narrative violence of Homestuck directly in the face. It involves seriously reconsidering what the narrative told you about this character. I think Gamzy is more real than a lot of the other characters we have covered or will cover, not because they are hurt or do violence, but because of all the things Hussey unintentionally reveals about himself along the way. I'm Bucky Grant, and I use he, her, or they, them pronouns. And I'm Daft Class, and I use he, slash him, or they, slash them pronouns. Let's get started. First, Gamzy is purple. Purple as in royalty, and purple as in corruption, purple as in magic, and purple as in set slightly off to the side. These ideas are mixed together to produce a socioeconomic position that's in conflict with itself, which leads to... Mixed class signals. The Gamzy is in a position societally where it's clear the narrative is trying to hide the white supremacist slash capitalist violence behind a black or brown face. The socioeconomics of the setting are presented in such a way that the marginalized people are both the oppressors and the oppressed. However, this character will be isolated from their class position, often to the point of them being a pariah. Their in-group doesn't accept them either, often because they are a quote-unquote failure, but sometimes because they are not considered quote-unquote useful to society. The Gamzee is alienated from society as a whole. The Gamzee is often initially presented as happy-go-lucky, but their text will push them beyond their breaking point and punish them for it. The ways in which they are treated are often very specific, as we'll explain. Often contributing to the Gamzee's isolation is their fealty to the satanic figure of their text, whether or not they wanted to, or had a reasonable choice in the process, the Gamzee is locked into a contract with the devil of their source material. The choice to participate may be held against them, but that choice is often tied to a power imbalance in which they are at a disadvantage. 
This is often tied to a complicated relationship with religion slash a religious figure. The Gamsi desires a purpose in life, and this need for structure is wielded against them. The Gamsi will also often have meta-narrative knowledge, breaking the fourth wall not to speak directly to the reader or viewer, but in a way that makes them aware of the story they reside in. In Gamsi's case specifically, this is part of what contributed to the events that led up to Murderstuck. The previous point is tied to how much of a narrative punching bag the Gamsi is painted as. The plot enacts violence on their body repeatedly for humor and slash or shock value, and if the plot doesn't hate them, the fans do. The piece of media could present a very nuanced, interesting, and deep exploration of the character, and the fan with the very underdeveloped critical praxis will come away thinking they're irredeemable. On top of being the narrative punching bag, the Gamsi often can't die at all. They're trapped in a recursive loop of trauma, reliving their worst moments. This is often tied to either an artificially extended lifespan, time travel bullshit, or even being trapped in a physical prison, such as a fridge. All of these points are exacerbated by the Gamsi being black or black-coded. The violence enacted on black people, and specifically their bodies in media, cannot be overlooked or ignored in this context. Gamsi and characters like them inherit racist imagery from the way white supremacy turns black pain into a spectacle. A lot of the fear and anxiety surrounding perception of these characters is rooted in racism and how black people are not welcome in white, upper-middle-class America. The way a Gamsi is portrayed also can overlap with demonization of neurodivergence, if not specifically plurality. Gamsi is shown to experience neurodivergence in a way that could be framed as anything from psychosis to plurality. I want to make it clear that this is not inherently a bad thing, but the narrative this character exists in is ableist and wants you to think that neurodivergence indicates the propensity for malice. Gamsis are also often exclusively attracted to their own gender. They are likely punished for this in text, and fans are unlikely to acknowledge their sexuality. Did you notice that the Gamkar Pale moment got retconned away? That Gamzi isn't allowed happiness with another man? Just something to think about. The Gamzi is also young, if not literally a child. They're far too young for whatever they're subjected to in their text. They would be a tragedy, except for how badly the narrative wants you to think they deserved it. This character archetype also often encompasses the quote-unquote bad addict trope, where they'll represent the demons of addiction with all the horror that represents to the white middle-class American psyche. This is especially true if other characters in the story struggle with some kind of addiction slash addiction equivalent, as the Gamzi will be contrasted against them to show what it looks like when you don't try hard enough. Now, let's apply what we've laid out. The first and most closely matching Gamsi is Anthe Hamamia from Revolutionary Girl Utena. Momo, aka Tumblr user Gamsi, has made this lovely graphic that really nails all the points here, but we'll explain further. Anthe was groomed as a child into a position as a narrative tool and as the destined reservoir of bad power. As Momo details on Twitter, comparing Briska to Gamsi really is a Nanami Anthe situation. Nanami had the same things happen to her, but was able to escape of her own power because she recognized it wasn't what she wanted. But then Nanami is so disgusted by Anthe that she continues to take it out on her. Raven from Team Titans is also a pretty damn good Gamsi candidate. She's purple to the max, and is the child of the satanic figure of her text Trigon, unwillingly a part of bringing him to a greater power. Raven can't die because she's on a kid's show. Checkmate. She's titularly a teen and absolutely has a forced evil side. I would argue that she's gay and in love with Starfire, but I'm biased. Lagoshi from Beastars also fits the criteria well. The craving to eat flesh that he feels, along with the way predators are treated in the society of Beastars, could be interpreted through a few different lenses, including racial conflict, substance use, or satanic fealty. Basically, the concept of meat-eating is moralized by way of anthropomorphizing animals. It does almost manifest as an alternate side of Lagoshi as well. He's also definitely a high schooler. He does maintain his positive attitude as much as he can, despite taking the most outward physical damage of any other character in the series. Lagoshi even gets a face scar like Gamzee. 
Also, yes, that was Pinkie Pie in the thumbnail, and we're right about that. She constantly breaks the fourth wall, and if she wasn't in a kid's cartoon and therefore made of rubber, she would have taken a tremendous amount of damage. The fans have given her an alternate evil personality, which caught on with fan fiction and fan videos around 2012. Also, she's obviously both black and gay, and there's nothing you can do about it! I will admit that I do not know the most about Naruto, but I have it on extremely good authority from two of my best friends that Itachi Uchiha is the Gamsi of Naruto. Itachi is trained into a killer at an extremely young age, crushing his spirit to produce a more powerful weapon. He's constantly struggling with having slaughtered his entire family and not being able to tell his brother why, right up until Sasuke kills him. He's even brought back to life to keep helping the plot along. The facts are undeniable. Itachi is a juggalo. The multiplying villain twice from My Hero Academia is also definitely a Gamzee. Twice, or Jin Bubai Gawara, presents with two conflicting personalities in addition to being able to split his body into copies of himself. He's the comic relief punching bag at times, and while he isn't unable to die, he does struggle with not knowing if he's the original twice or a copy. The world of My Hero Academia shows that it does not provide the support systems people like Jin need. Instead, they're left by the wayside, hence heroes only care about helping good people, as he puts it. With no one willing to help him, he takes what he can get. Through this, he embodies the tragicomic split of the Gamsi. However, much of the fan discourse around him ultimately stems from an attempt to diagnose whether or not he deserves the kind of saving he needs. The narrative might not gamzify him, but the fandom sure as shit does. We also have a few that we'll run through quickly, since we've been telling you about clowns for quite a while now. Without any explanation, all of these characters are gamzies too. Mewtwo from the Pokemon movie and anime. Daisy Fitzroy from Bioshock Infinite. Toki Wartooth from Metalocalypse. Homura from Puella Magi Madoka Magica. Jean Grey from X-Men. Juggernaut Star from Kill Six Billion Demons. And Nia Teplin from Tengen Tampa Gurren Lagan. So, you're probably wondering why we consider this to be important. We've alluded to this in past videos, but reconfiguring the fandom perception of characters to involve fan input has always been the goal of this series. This is not in the least because of the way black fans and black characters have been treated in our fandom and in general. The directions that Gamzee's character takes are undeniably influenced by the author's biases. No matter how much the comic itself lambshakes the death of the author by literally blowing him away on the screen, Andrew Hussey still wrote an illustrated Homestuck, and Andrew Hussey's biases show through. Gamzee is crucified by Homestuck, and many people cheered it on. If you did, you were cheering because the comic told you to do so. But the people who related to Gamzee, or found something interesting, or just human there, were alienated by that. We invite you to consider extending that same courtesy you gave to the other characters in Homestuck to Gamzee as well, and remember that he was a fictional child put through the ringer by someone who, intentionally or not, enacted racist violence upon him. Going forward from here, we have the chance to recognize the way Gamzee was framed as well as the way people responded to them and those like them. We have the responsibility to make this place for black creators, queer and disabled creators, and everyone else who relates to Gamzee. There's been a lot of hostility towards even simple critiques of race in Homestuck, but we're hoping the more it's discussed, the less scary it is and the more welcoming we can make the Homestuck fandom. We recommend you take a look at some of the writing linked in the description for more about how the clowns are framed in Homestuck and other writings by people who have been thinking about this for far longer than I have, including Daft. Also, some talented artists who we think deserve more attention. These include Shyanx, Cole, and DJ Terezi, whose info is linked below. But there's many more lovely people you can find still here in the fandom. This also isn't to say that Gamzee isn't a character you can't have fun with. Just please recognize that keeping them in the status of being a caricature or a punching bag doesn't hurt Andrew Hussey, it hurts the people who relate to Gamzee. That's as simple as I can break it down, I think. Thank you 
so, so much for listening if you got this far. We really appreciate it. And remember, you can't keep down the clown. 